my famous trick of all time, not taking the mute off. So <laughs> we should be able to hear it now. But like I said, last week we talked about uh, we talked about the Baged Kafat letters, right? You remember those, right? Those six letters that change their sound when they have a dot inside of them. And we talked about A-type vowels, right? We had kamatz and patah and chatef patah, right? And then we even talked about an O-type vowel, right? The kamets ketuv, right? We talked about that guy. And that makes an O sound. But what we want to do today, we're going to talk about, we're definitely going to talk about the E-type vowels, okay? So in Hebrew, the the vowel E, right, makes an E sound, like E-H, okay? And of course, you have a, lo, a short and a long version, right? And I'm going to show you the marks for those, and we're going to go over some words. And We're also going to talk about this little guy called the Shva. Now, the Shva is it's two dots, one right over the other. And it has a lot of rules attached to it. So we're going to take a look at those rules and see, you know, see what happens with those. Okay? So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the E-type vowels. All right. So I'm going to put this letter up here. Okay, so what letter is that? Do we remember? That's the bet, bet, right? And we know it's bet because it has the dot inside of it. So we're talking about E-type vowels today, right? So let's talk about the long E-type vowel, which is like they're both going to sound exactly the same, except for one's going to be held for a longer time than the other, okay? So when we see this letter and we have two dots in it, but they're next to each other, all right? They're underneath the letter and they're right next to each other. That is called sere, sere. Very good. That's called sere. And that is a long E-type vowel, okay? So T-S-E-R-E, sere. I'm going to put an L in here, so that stands for long, okay? So the tsere, that is a long E-type vowel, okay? So we also have a short E-type vowel, right? And that actually, do you see how we have these two dots next to each other? So what we're going to do is we're going to add a third one, and it's going to go right there. So it makes kind of like if you if you attached all the... If you attached all the dots, it would make like a triangle, like an upside-down triangle, right? So that is called segol, right? Segol. And that guy makes a short E-H sound. So just eh. Okay? So we have a short one. All right, segol. And usually when you transliterate it, you're just going to transliterate it as an E, okay? You transliterate the longer ones with the H on the end because you're extending the sound. So E eh versus E, eh. okay? This is E. Eh. So right here, how would we pronounce that syllable? B, B, right? The B sound and then the quick E. Okay, but then we also have this guy. We just keep adding dots underneath this, underneath this letter, don't we? So now we have those five dots. <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of like, but well, because it's just a series of dots. All right, so we also have this one. And this has how many? We've got five dots under here now, right? So that is called 
Katef Sego. All right? That's just a quick E as well. But we see that it is Katef, right? What tells us it's Katef? That's part of it. It's the two dots that are in front of the of the other mark. Okay? So see, we got these two dots in front of the three. We know that that's Segol. So it's Chatef Segol. Okay? But could we use that mark under this letter? Can we use Chatef Segol under this letter? No, we can't. And the reason is because chatef vowels are only used under what type of letters? You remember from last week? There's five of them. Starts with a G. Gutturals. So bet is not a guttural letter. So we couldn't, you couldn't use this form under there, right? So if we had this letter instead, if we had Aleph instead, right, or we had He or Chet, okay, so we have Aleph, right? So if we have Aleph, well, then we could, because Aleph is a guttural letter. So in this case, if we had Aleph and we had Chatef Segol, what sound would this letter make? Yeah, very good. Thought you had a little burp there, but no, okay. But it's just going to make a eh sound, okay? Because it's a silent letter with an E type, a, a shortened or reduced E type vowel underneath it. So it's just going to make an E sound, eh, okay? Now, there are other combinations here, right? There's other combinations here. So if we had a tsere, which is the two dots, right, with a yud following it, that's going to make an ei sound like in the word, like in the number eight, right? A going to make an A sound, like Eloheinu, or Elohim, okay, Elohenu. So that A is a diphthong, that segol with a yud following, okay? So it's going to make an A sound. Like I said, like the E-I in the word eight, the number eight. But we'll get to talking about diphthongs too. Diphthongs are where you have combinations of marks and letters, and they work together to make one sound. Okay, we'll talk about those. Too. So, <clears throat> right there you have sere long, sego short, and then you also have chetef sego, which is short, or sometimes some books will even call it reduced. Okay, because it's a shortened form. All right, so that's the E type vowels. So then what type of vowels do we have? We have I type vowels, right? Which in our, for all intents and purposes, I type vowels make the same sound as like the two E's in the word green or teen or seen, right? So the I in Hebrew makes an E-E -E sound. Does that make sense? Green or seen, right? Green, green or seen, seen, 
So these two E's make an E sound, but that's what we call an I type vowel. Because we were speaking about it before when we talked about how Hebrew vowels, Hebrew vowel sounds, and the vowel sounds in Spanish are exactly the same. So in English we say A, but in Spanish they say A. Ah. In English we say E, but in Spanish you say E. Eh. Right? English we say I. Spanish you say E. Now, the O, that stays exactly the same. We say O, they say O. But we also say U, and they say OO. It's like the little guy we drew with the stomach ache, right? Ooh. All right? So the I type vowels make this double E sound. Okay? So let's do this. Let's do a. Oh, let's go back to our bait since that's a easy letter for everybody to work with. So we have our bait and we know that it makes a B sound. B. Right? That's right. A B makes a B sound. Okay? But if we had this mark underneath it, so all of your I type vowels are going to be underneath. So we have a single dot. Now, before we had a double, then we had three, and then we had five, right? But when we have a single dot, that is a mark called kirik. Kirik, all right? C-H-I-R-I-Q, kirik. All right? That makes the double E. This is a short duration vowel point. So it's E. E. Just E. Okay. But then we have a long form, right? Don't we? What's the long form? Kirik yo. So we have to add another letter to get the long form of this. And what we do is we just put a yod up here. So now that's kiri yod, and that's like e. Yeah. Aleph, ayin, chet, hey, and sometimes the letter resh. Okay. So, how would we pronounce this word now? this sound b like what buzzes around and makes honey and it'll sting you a b right exactly so that's how we would pronounce it like this b and another thing you know what's really handy sometimes and this is a good practice um when we very you know when i first very 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 first i mean they were still in watonga when I first started, when we first started teaching about Hebrew letters and sounds and all of that kind of stuff, we first started doing that. There's an actually a tool that's very, very easy to do. And it's kind of fun to do too. But if you can take an English word and try to write it with Hebrew letters and make it sound like the English word, like in this case, if we had this little guy right here, right? We had this little guy. He's got some things here and a stinger. And he's got little wings. All right, that little guy, he's a what? That's a B, right? Well, if we pronounce this, it's pronounced B. So it's just an easy way to get the sound. Now, that is not the word for a bee in Hebrew, okay? The word for a honey bee in Hebrew is devora, all right? But for our intents and purposes, just learning the sound, we can say bee. Does that make sense? Okay? 
So we know that that's, so when we have this combination, this dot, and this little mark up here, that is Kirik Yod. All right? And that's a long duration. Okay? Everybody with me? Matijahu, is this easy for you to understand, my friend? Cool. Excellent. So those are sounds that where you'll see where you'll see that E or the I type sound. Okay? I call them I type sounds, but they make the sound E. Okay? So let's move on to our next vowel. So what's our next vowel that we're going to look at? Oh. All right. So we have O. Oh. oh. Stub my toe. O. Oh. O. Oh. Huh? Not oat. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't put a T on it. Not oat. All right. So we have O, right? So let's do this. Let's use our friend the bait again. So now we have a little trick we can do here. Okay. So if we have the bait and then we take a dot and we put it over here over the left hand side, that's what we call holem. Holem. Okay. Cholem. So the bait, so if we had a bait, b, followed by cholem, o, what sound are we going to make here? Not boat. Don't put that T on the end of it. Bow. Bow. Like a bow tie, okay? So a bow, okay? So we have the B sound, and then we have kolem, b, o, bow, okay? So we have bow. So we know that kolem makes an o sound. Now the funny thing about kolem is that kolem is long. Something neat with the o sounds, and I'm going to show you something here. So kolem is long, okay? So we have bow. But there's also another way to spell bow, isn't there? Okay? You remember the guy with the idea? How did he look? He had a dot over top of him, right? But in this case, we're not going to put it directly over the top of his head. We're going to leave it right where it is. We're just going to elongate the sound by adding him to it. So we already have the, the light bulb up here, right? So these guys both, they have the same idea. They're sharing an idea, right? They're, so we have the bait, and it's pointed how? Holem wa. This is a long duration vowel point two. Okay? So O type vowels, holem and holem wa, are both long duration. The only short duration O is what, Kim? Not Kamat. <laughs> what she calls now. You remember the A that sounds like an O? That, that's, the, that's a short duration O. But both of these, Holem and Holem Wa, they both have the same sound, O. Okay? So we have the B sound, we have the O sound. Bow. Okay? Bow. Any questions on the O type vowel? O type vowels are easy. There's only two marks, right? 
They're easy to say and they're easy to remember. Okay? I'm sorry, Sid? Oh, okay. Okay, thanks. So like I said, we have the B sound and then the O sound. So let's move on to our next mark, which is our last vowel point, okay? So what's our last vowel point here? It's the U-type vowel, or what sound do they make? Ooh, okay. So the U-type vowel makes a sound like two O's, like ooh, like in room, or broom, right? Ooh, makes an ooh sound. Ooh, just ooh. You always want to stick a T. I'll tell you what, I'm going to charge you a dollar for every T that you put on the end of a word. I wouldn't do that. I'm picking with you. But like I said, it's just ooh. Okay? Now, next year, next year when you've been in this class for a while, I'm going to start charging you a quarter for every T. And then by the time five years rolls around, then you go on me a dollar every time you do. I'm just joking with you. All right. But it's pronounced ooh. Just like the guy with the stomach ache, right? Ooh. Well, so that sound, ooh. All right. So we have, let's do our little bait here. All right. Now, Naomi, what sound does that letter make? That's the name of it. But what sound does it make? B, 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 the B sound, B. Very good. That's right. Very good. So it makes a B sound. But we want to make it sound how? We want to make it sound with the oo sound, right? We want to make it sound like oo, right? So what we have to do here is we can't really add like shuruk here, can we? No, but we've already got a dagesh inside of it, so we'd have to. All right, well, that's how we would do it, but I'm going to come back to shuruk. Okay, but let's do this instead. Instead of using bait, let's use gimel, okay? Let's use our friend gimel here, all right? So gimel. So gimel. What sound does this one make? What sound does it make? G. Very good. And g, just like in the word good, right? G, g or give. Okay. So we have the gimel. Now here's the thing. If we put a mark here, right? Then that's gonna. That's called what? Shuruk, it, it could, and that's why it's hard, it's hard to tell, all right? But shuruk, that makes an oo sound, right? So, if we were to pronounce this syllable all on its own, how would we pronounce it? Goo, like some goo, right? So, oh, I stepped in some goo, all right? So, we'd have the G sound and then the oo, goo. Yeah, like like in the word gooey, right? So goo, all right? But we could also do it a different way. We could do it like this. We could do it with this guy. See, now we have three marks moving down diagonally, don't we? Three dots. Kind of, I guess. If you had three eyeballs, they could look like that. But we would still have the oo sound here. So we would still pronounce this as how? Goo, right? But we have this mark is called kubutz. Kubutz. All right? Kubutz. And that makes the oo sound as well. Okay, kubutz makes the oo sound as well. Now, there's another way that we can make the oo sound. All right, so let's go back to our friend Gimel. 
All right? So we have this G, this G sound here. But we want to make it say goo. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a, what they call a full vowel variant. It makes a long oo sound. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to add a wa behind it. And how are we going to point it? With a shuruk. G, u, gu. See, it makes the same sound. So when we're transliterating words, it becomes very important that we learn how to recognize the patterns that are in the word for the sounds. You see? So when we see the letters and we see these marks and we know, okay, this makes a oo sound, this makes an e sound. And then all you got to do is stick the consonant or the non-vowel sound in front of it. And then you're doing good. All right? So you may transliterate the word, take the Hebrew word and put it in English, but then we still got to figure out what the Hebrew word is, right? So that's a whole nother ball game. But for right now, we're just trying to get the sounds down. Okay? So let's look at another mark here that we use. Any questions on the U-type vowel? Okay? So even though we would say U, in Hebrew it's pronounced U, right? So let's, let's talk about another mark. Let's talk about a, a mark called the Shva. Shva. No, Shva. Shva. Okay? So the Shva is a mark. Sometimes you'll see, let's put our bait back up here. Okay? And you'll see these two dots on top of each other. And a lot of times it's used, it's used mostly at the beginning of words, right? Usually it's, it's used at the beginning of words. Okay? So these two dots are called the schwa. Now you have two different kinds. Unfortunately, they look exactly the same, don't they? All right? You have the vocal and the silent schwa. So, Silent shva only does one thing. It cuts off the syllable and closes it. Okay? So you would just stop. Boom. Cut it off. The vocal shva, you say the consonant sound and then you add a quick e after it. Okay? So, for example, <clears throat> if we said... All right, so this word here, we have the bait pointed vocal shiva. So one of the points, one of the ways that we know that it's vocal shiva, it's going to be some good notes. One way that we know that it's vocal shiva is it's at the beginning of a word. So if you have a if you have a shva at the beginning of a word, it's always going to be vocal. It means we're always going to say it. Okay? So what we do is we give it a real quick e sound. So in this case, we have a bait pointed with vocal shva. How would we pronounce that syllable? Be. Be. Just quick. All right? Then we have shin. Ta, sha, then we have the bait pointed kamet with ta behind it. But, all right, so be Shabbat, in Shabbat, or on Shabbat, right? Be Shabbat. All right, so it's always vocal when it's at the beginning of a word. Okay? So when else is it always vocal? Very good. So the second. Now it doesn't always have to be at the beginning of a word to be vocal. Right? So.
if the shva follows a long duration vowel point, then it is vocal as well. If it follows a short duration vowel point, then it's silent. Okay? So, what about our third? What's our third rule for it being vocal? The third rule for it being vocal is if it is the second of two. So what do I mean by that? If we have a word, all right, we have a word here. I'm going to put four imaginary letters in it. We have a vocal, or we have a shva, and we have a shva. They're right next to each other. So how do we count? We count from le from right to left, right? So which of these two? You got two here. This is the first of a set of two. This is the second of a set of two. So in a case like this, which one of these is vocal? Look at rule number three. So the second in a set of two is the vocal shva. The first in a set of two is silent. Because you have to close one sound in order to open up the other. Does that make sense? Okay. So if you have them where you've got two of them right next to each other, the first one is always silent. The second one is always vocal. Now there's a fourth rule, and this is the last rule for Shavas. Okay? The last rule for Shavas. All right. So if we have a letter here that is carrying what we call dagesh. So you know you've got two different types of dagesh, right? You got one that changes the sound and one that changes how many syllables. Right? So if the dagesh or if the shva is under a letter that is carrying the dagesh that makes it double, then it's also vocal. Okay? I know, I know, I know. It's a lot of rules, I know. But, like I said, so if we had a letter that we knew was going to be double, right? So let's just do that. Let's do that. Let's take a letter here. Let's use this Lamed, for example. So we have the letter Lamed. So we have the letter Lamed here. And we're going we're gonna to double it. All right, so let's take this word. Al. I'm going to get, I'm getting there. Happy now? All right. So, I had to add a letter because I wasn't talking about, I was just trying to give an example, but And I was getting to that point. But since you jumped the gun, took off on me. All right. So what we have here, we have the this Aleph, which is a silent letter, right? And how is it pointed? It's got patak, which is what kind of a vowel or what kind of a mark? It's a short duration vowel point. So we have, we have, a, we have a, a, a shva here. 
So if schwa follows a short duration vowel point, it's supposed to be silent. However, this letter has a dogish in it that's going to cause us to double it, right? So since we have to double this letter, this becomes vocal. So this goes from being al to al lef. Now, okay, so I'm just using this as an example, okay? But since we're going to double this L sound, the second vowel point, or the second L, is going to pick up the vowel point, which now happens to be a vocal schwa, right? Because silent schwa is not a vowel point. It doesn't make any sound. But vocal schwa does. So we count that as a vowel point. Okay? So there's four rules for using them if that'll tell you whether they're vocal. If, if, it's, if it's a silent shiva, it's the exact opposite of the rules that we have. So if it's at the beginning of a word, it's always going to be vocal. So if it's not at the be beginning of a word, it has a good chance at being what? Silent. Okay? So that's the first ring. If you have an ale or if you have a schwa at the beginning of a word, always going to be vocal. Anywhere else, it could be silent. Okay? So, if your schwa is following a short duration vowel point, what kind of schwa is it? Silent. Because we know it's vocal if it follows a long duration vowel. Okay? So, the first of two is what kind of schwa? It's silent, right? Because the second of two is always vocal. And then, if it's under a letter that's not carrying Dagesh, it's most likely going to be silent. Okay? Most likely going to be silent. But we have to run it through the rest of the rules first. And then we know. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's just like what we're talking about. You got to think, you guys have been studying for 15 years, okay? So you'll get it eventually. Actually, it's easier for the littler ones to pick it up than it is for us old folks. So it takes a little longer for us because our brains ain't really growing no more and holding on to information. We're losing more, more stuff than we're picking up every day. So, like I said, Dagesh, or not Dagesh, Shba causes problems for people. <laughs> but I will tell you that it's not a problem. Okay? As we go through this class over the next weeks and months and y'all will willing years, okay? As we go over it and as we progress, you guys need to know one thing above anything else. And that is, if you have a question, what do I expect you to do? Call me. Ask me. Okay, I, I do not, I'm not going to put anybody down. You know what I mean? If you have a question, and even if you think it's a silly question, ask, because that's how we learn, right? Yeah. The dot inside is the dagesh. Dagesh always goes inside of a letter. Okay, the dots, the two dots that are underneath, those are your schwa. And in this case, since we're under this letter that's carrying a dagesh, that is vocal shiva. Okay? So like I said, always feel free to ask. Ask me in person. Call me on the phone. Send me an email, text message. I don't care. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> but if it'll help you learn, you know what I mean? Like I tell folks, my phone rings how many hours a day? 
24 hours a day, seven days a week. My phone don't just shut off. So if you have a question, call me and ask me. And if I don't know the answer, well, heck, we'll, we'll work together and we'll learn it together. That's how we do, you know. But anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go today. We covered a lot of vowels and a lot of other stuff, and it's getting right at sundown. So anyway, love you, appreciate you. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining us here in our class today.